humanity is captured and sent somewhere somehow. Yes. But since that time, the war has gone on sort of Trojan horse-like. The factions that want to destroy humanity are working on the earth in human form. I guess so. And you suggested in your emails a meeting between the tall blondes and government representatives here in the U.S.? Yes. What he showed me was about seven blondes in white robes with a dark sash in the middle, all standing around with men in suits. Now, if that was government officials, I don't know. Where were they? In a room. No table. It was a blank white wall room. No pictures. Did you have a sense of what year this occurred? I did. The humans, I guess, were dressed maybe 40, 50. What happened in this plain room between the seven tall blonde beings and what looked like government officials in the U.S. in the 1940s to 1950s? To me, it seemed like it was some type of an agreement between the humans and the blonde, maybe letting them know that they're here. If there were seven tall blonde beings, how many humans were in the room? Well. So what did he show you as the next image in your mind after seeing the room of 12 human men and seven tall blonde beings having a meeting, talking about some kind of an agreement. What was the very next image that the blonde man in 2012 showed you happen next? The next image I saw was, um, I guess would be one of the blondes, but he had a white beard and his hair was white. I guess he was cold. And he was standing in the middle of the room with a human in a suit what they're doing with us. It's something to do with genes, maybe changing us in some way. And they are doing this through genetically manipulating sperm and eggs in current humans in order to make a whole new population of humans that would be different than the ones that the other blonde faction want to destroy. Yes. It wasn't anything as far as look. It was something within. One thing he told me was the difference between him and us was the brain. They're able to use all of their brain, and we can't. And I guess we were made like that, maybe to keep us in line. You know, if you're just smart as a boss, then the boss doesn't like that. The blondes live way longer, and they're able to do things because they can use their entire brain. So humans were made with a restriction on what we could access in our brains. Exactly. Meaning that they have been trying to manipulate certain bloodlines for thousands of years of humans that they created. Exactly. And that today, some of you are the current human model from the genetic manipulation that the blondes have been doing on the Earth. Right. What do you understand that the blondes want to do with humans now that are the product of all of the genetic manipulation for the past several thousand years. I don't know exactly what he wants to do, but I know that it's something to do with maybe making the entire population in a certain way. Tyler Jones is not the only abductee who has described a kind of civil war in the tall, blonde civilization. In my book, Glimpses of Other Realities, Volume 2, High Strangeness, there is a 106-page chapter entitled Body Containers and Souls of Life. Several abductees recount their experiences with tall humanoids, some tall blondes, that are described by abductee Juana Lawson this way, quote, those tall blondes wanted to take a sub-creature and evolve it to the level that they were on and prove that this could be done, like taking animals and giving them the hearts of angels, close quote. Summarizing Juana Lawson's insights about the tall blondes from her November 1983 abduction in Pennsylvania, those extraterrestrials from another star system two million years ago decided to manipulate DNA in already evolving primates on this planet Earth. The idea allegedly began when the tall blondes built 
many large pyramid, obelisk, and sphinx structures on this planet for energy production, and then they got tired of doing the work themselves. Juana Lawson says the tall blondes then decided to experiment, to experiment by using some of their own DNA to create an earth creature that they could communicate with telepathically so it could do work for them. It's the same concept that Tyler described. The tall blondes wanted to make controllable worker beings for earthworks. And then that faction of controller tall blondes manipulated DNA in already evolving earth primates and kept tweaking their various evolutions up to us, Cro-Magnon, Homo sapiens sapiens. And during that evolution, those tall blondes tried to protect their humanoid experiment from another faction of their own tall blonde civilization that despised the earth humanoid creations because our advancements were due to the insertion of the tall blonde gene. And that disgusted some of the tall blondes and they decided to annihilate the homo sapien creation that their fellow tall blondes had made. Juana Lawson says, as an abductee, quote, you have a group of tall blondes that is trying to defeat the other tall blonde experiment. You have a group that is doing everything it can to prove that the experiment was a fluke. They have tried to undermine from the beginning that they argued could not be done. I call them the controllers. They think humans are despicable, less than a roach, close quote. And I ask Juana Lawson, when anything feels hatred and wants to destroy, it usually means the destroyer is threatened by something. Why would humans threaten the very advanced controllers, the controller tall blonde? And Juana said, quote, you are dealing with an entity that feels superior and looks at humans as you would a roach or a bug. The controllers don't want to concede that the tall blondes that made humans by manipulating genes in a lowly evolving primate, that the other blondes could be right that lower life forms could evolve. The others are against that, do not want that to be supported. The bottom line is it's a no holds barred battle. The tall blondes are not fighting each other they are fighting regarding humans through humans. Remember that DIA analyst who told me that World War II was an extraterrestrial war fought through human bodies? It's the same idea. In a way, it's a philosophical argument about how far DNA manipulation of life forms should go. The tall blondes who made humans think humans should now be protected to advance spiritually. Close quote. Now, I want to go to uh, the Glimpses of Other Realities, Volume 1, Facts and Eyewitnesses, that I was writing in the late 1990s. And in my prologue to that book, I began with what I consider to be one of the most provocative ancient alien and ancient writings ever found in the Dead Sea Scrolls. It's the Testament of Amran, written in Aramaic and translated by Professor Robert Eisenman, which also has a theme of higher intelligences in conflict over what happens to humans. This is the Qumran Cave 4, where the Testament of Amran was found in fragments of Aramaic language that are at least 2,200 years old. In the second century before Christ, Qumran was the village where the Essenes lived in a common bond about expecting a divine Messiah to usher in a new kingdom on earth. In the second century before Christ, the Essenes began writing their mysterious Dead Sea Scrolls, first in Aramaic and later in Hebrew. 
The fragile scrolls were buried inside of hill caves. Bedouins did not discover this Qumran cave 4 until August of 1952. Qumran is about 20 miles east of Jerusalem on the northwest shore of the Dead Sea. After World War II, a Bedouin shepherd was first to discover the Dead Sea Scrolls in the first of 10 caves. The scrolls survived for at least 2,200 years because those desert caves were so dry. That's why those original and very ancient Aramaic words in the Testament of Amran are so intriguing and seem to echo what Tyler and Moana Lawson and other people in the human abduction experiences have been told about an ancient war ongoing from the days of temptation by a reptile in the Garden of Eden. A reptile described as a teacher and a leader of forces in darkness and evil. Here now is the Dead Sea Scroll Testament of Amra. Quote, I saw watchers in my vision, the dream vision. Two men were fighting over me, holding a great contest over me. I asked them, who are you that you are thus empowered over me? They answered, we have been empowered and rule over all mankind. They said to me, which of us do you choose to rule you? I raised my eyes and looked. One of them was terrifying in his appearance, like a serpent, his cloak, many colored yet very dark. And I looked again and in his appearance, his visage like a viper. I replied to him, this watcher, who is he? He answered, this watcher, his three names are Belial and Prince of Darkness and King of Evil. I said to the other watcher, my Lord, what dominion have you? He answered, you saw the viper and he is empowered over all darkness while I am empowered over all light. My three names are Michael, Prince of Light, and King of Righteousness." Close quote. Perhaps the highly classified MJ-12 group, appointed by President Truman in 1947 to study the UFO phenomenon, and then President Eisenhower's alleged face-to-face -face meeting with either a blonde Nordic type or a gray artificial intelligence type or something that we don't know, is how they learn that Earth is a laboratory, that many types of other intelligences experiment here on our planet. And according to whistleblowers, our current species of Homo sapiens sapien is one of the experiments. But the ET manipulators have wanted that kept secret, and human power brokers were glad to keep the secret. But now it seems like something else is pushing hard against the policies of lies and deceptions, wanting the truth to break out. Will some of the friendly ETs be able to save Earth from persistent tribalism that has kept humans fighting against each other instead of the much better path? of peaceful alliances that help everyone. It feels like a lot now in 2021 is hanging in a very, very uncertain balance. And about to burst into the big hall of destiny is the mind-cracking truth. We humans are not alone in this universe and we deserve to know who made us, who hates us, who loves us, and who wants to protect us. Now, for those of you who would like to go over Tyler's interviews and see a lot of the images involved with that report and others, please go to my Earth Files News website for the seven-part series that began on March 19th through March 28th. The first part has the Tyler first part audio in it, and part two has the second part, and then it goes on fleshing out other very important aspects of all of this.
through part seven. And uh, what I would like to recommend is uh, that you go to www.earthfiles.com, my news website, to go through those seven parts and uh, to know that Earth Files is the great place to check in, in addition to social media, about what we are doing and what subjects are coming up. And that part one through seven, I do recommend. And for those of you who would like to make comments and ask questions now, Ian, the floor goes to you. Okay, well, thank you, Linda. That was an amazing interview again and amazing content that you supplemented that with tonight it certainly sparked a lot of interest a lot of comments in the uh, in the chat first of all i'd like to say thank you to the super chats again this evening to moonbird jacqueline Merkit, crystal Leglet, jenna McHugh, cat chaser sexy sadie jeffrey rizzo michael donahue Mary Kelly, Jean Karcher, Dave Goodridge, Donna Bliss, and TNC. I think I've got everyone tonight. Wow, thank you so, so much. All of it helps keep this going, and I greatly appreciate all of you. So, Ian, what is the first question that you've got on your list? Well, the first question is, uh, people are also relating uh, this story to the Sakura Sitchin story, The Ananarchy. Can you make a comment on that as well? Yes, uh, absolutely parallels all over the place. Um, I have uh, been asked to read, and for some reason tonight, Chocolate really wants to get involved with our table, so I'm trying to uh, let him be involved, but not blocking the screen. Um, the story on The Ananarchy is sort of uh, the, maybe they originated in Zeta Reticuli 1 and 2, and they had a war there, and it was between greys and talls, that the talls were the Anunnaki, and the, the greys had a planet in that solar system. And the story that I have read in a French book that I was asked to read and do a book commentary to uh, a couple of years ago, the way they laid it out was that the talls in the Zeta Reticuli 1 and 2 solar system made a, I guess you'd call it a secret run to the, what was called the gray planet in the, in the French book, uh, meaning a book of the, or a planet with the grays. And that the tall ones in that same Zeta Reticuli 1 and 2 solar system wanted to get the genes from whatever the greys were because they're a mix of artificial intelligence and organic. So it's hard to know and even judge any of these alleged translations because none of us have been to Zeta Reticuli 1 and 2 and know if this is, makes sense. But it was the same story that the Talls wanted worker bees and they went surreptitiously to another planet in the solar system, brought back genetic material, started making their uh, gray worker bees, and then they uh, got into a war, and then they left and ended up on Mars, and they were there for a while, and then they had an attack by the grays. This story keeps going on and on uh, as a backstory to the Anunnaki, uh, we'll say the, all of this sandstone that is carved uh, with uh, the history, allegedly. And if this is all true, then the backstory on the ET interactions with Mars and Earth goes even to uh, a 37 light year away solar system going back who knows how far. So it's the same theme, whether you're talking about the Anunnaki or you're talking about uh, some of the whistleblowers talking today, it is exactly the same theme. A very smart, very intelligent, but I would say aggressive, tall species uh, that doesn't 
have any compunction about going to planets, uh, gathering DNA, gene genetic material.